Everybody. Hello. Come on, stretch. Okay, yeah. bud, I'm coming. I'll sit on this yeah. okay. yeah. Move, move the that. wedge. <laughs> yeah, what to sit on the wedge, buddy. <laughs> you do you. You don't need a boost. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I don't know. Hey, there. <laughs> You're all morning. I am going to reconvene the board commission and send our schedule. Work session. Sorry. It is now what, 9 57, 8, whatever it is. Um, we now have Commissioner Hensley, myself, Commissioner Commissioner Minty had to step out to another appointment. How you doing? Good. Um, so the last thing on our agenda today is a discussion with the fair board regarding the property at 3319 South 6th Street. So for folks in the room who haven't been with us before or who have, just as a reminder, first time you speak, say your name so that way when they're taking minutes, they know who said what. Other than that, did you put this on? I did. Take it away. So I thought it was important that we have some face time with the fair board to sit down and talk about that property Perfect. at 3319 South 6th Street. And, and no, no fault to anyone, but um, maybe there were some ideas or some perceived expectations as to who was going to do what and what that future might look like with that property. Mm -hmm. And to avoid all of that, I just felt it was really important that we all sat down together and talked about wh what are we trying to do? Right. What is this going to be? What is this going to look like? How might this, how might this play out? So as, as the fair board's making decisions and we're making decisions, we're making those based on the same information, the same expectations, the same priorities, rather than just making assumptions. And so we have an amazing partnership with the fair board for anybody listening online, and I want to make sure that we continue that. So, and I'll just uh, maybe add on to that before we... In discussions. I mean, we bought the building for a very specific purpose, and since that purchase and the work going towards getting that accomplished, nobody's made a decision necessarily where it's going to sit. So that decision has never been made. It's just ongoing conversations. Um, whether we talked about it belonging to the Extension Service District, that actually okay. ended up being something that is not possible. So the other two options that are being discussed is whether or not it would uh, rest at the fairgrounds or whether or not it would just rest as a Klamath County property and we would manage it as Klamath County property management. Uh, and we have uh, Rick Vaughn in the back. So all, both of those are um, a, a possibility. These aren't on fail. So um, I don't know. i got to say nice things again. Yeah. The community can hear <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I will say it's, well, from my perspective, this is what it is. It's a building that's paid for, and it's going to be housed somewhere with a guaranteed anchor tenant. So from a real estate developing perspective, and that's how I approach a lot of this stuff, I mean, if neither one of them wants it, we can talk about DNS properties taking it over, because I'll make a mint. So anyway, next. Uh, I, think, I think also part of that conversation the fair board reached out to the exchange club and talked about that park and the exchange club agreed that uh, yeah. that didn't need to be maintained as a park anymore so there's some conversations about that being storage there's conversations about that being a parking lot and i thought this is really an opportunity for us to have a conversation with let's talk about the management of that facility and if the fair board is interested in doing that i'm extremely interested in the fair board doing that but not at a loss to the fair board financially so that has to pencil out so we need to have ongoing conversations about that penciling out in a very uh, positive way but second to that how do we then so we applied for that grant mm -hmm. to remodel that building and one of the things that i brought up um, and i know we're moving forward with is that grant needed to extend outside that building Mm -hmm. And then it needed to include the parking lot. And I went so far as to say it also needs to include the exchange park and, and the connectivity and maybe the driveway and the culvert to the fairgrounds. So there's a, a flow from both buildings. So sure. if the fairgrounds does decide that works out, that pencils out for us to manage that, how do we get foot traffic and vehicles to flow through all that so it really expands the footprint of the fairgrounds? That's where my head is going. So I felt today was really important for us just to open that dialogue. And if that's 
the vision. And if we all agree on that vision, then let's start setting some goals and some benchmarks to get us to that vision. Um, and if you guys are like, Dave, you're crazy. That we don't want that vision, then let's talk about that and let's shift gears. But I was at your, your guys' meeting the other day and this conversation started to come up and I really just wanted to hit a tactical pause to make sure that we were all making decisions based on the same information. So that's the point of today. So um, you're the chair, I don't mean to take over. I'd love to hear from you and, yeah, and what do you want and what is your vision? What are you excited about? What do you think's not realistic? Aren't you the chair? Um, yeah. Okay. And, and then, then you get to lead that side. <laughs> Let's work together on this. Ready? Um, Greg, Who are you? Greg Sherrill, uh, Cloud County Fair Board uh, Chairman. Yeah. Um, I, I, I love it. So, um, you know, within, like when we first originally thought about it, we thought, you know, hey, let's make the purchase for us. But then, you know, the, the payoff and the things were a little different than we thought. So you guys went ahead and bought it. But if it, if it makes dollars and cents for us to, you know, maintain it, own it, operate it, um, I'm all for it, you know. Um, I think that it, it's a desirable piece of property. The footprint lays out very nice with the fairgrounds um, footprint. Um, one of the main people that use the fairgrounds is extension. And if they're there and that's a hub there and they're a long-term, you know, tenant, and then we bring someone else in or what, you know, uh, it's, if, if it pencils out, I'm, I'm 100% for it. You just got to make dollars and cents, right? Right. You know, and I mean, obviously we'll go <laughs> around the room, but just in, in response to that, when I'm looking at it, I, I mean, you and I both been in real estate a minute or two, I would just say I'm looking at it really the same way I would be if I was a, a real estate investor, right? Mm -hmm. The extension service district was gonna, is going to pay market rate rent. Yeah. So if you look at it like that, it really starts to make sense real fast. Yeah. So. I think the conversation changes dramatically when we find out if we're going to get this grant. And if we get this grant and we're, we're successful and that grant's going to pay for the remodel, the parking lot reconstruction, and then adding the connectivity to the fairgrounds, yeah. I think that really sharpens your pencil. It really starts to make sense. Um, but without the grant, I'm not sure. I'm a little scared about it. Yeah. Um, where are we at with the city booster station? <laughs> well, look who's in the room. <laughs> Mark, how's it going? <laughs> Mark, we at City Public Works. We just had a conversation about that actually being yesterday. And so uh, we, I think we have a, we're, it's not like everybody's pretty much in agreement that we would go at the very north end of that triangle. Um, and at the same time, it sounds like there's some discussions with the county public works also about for us doing some realignment of that roadway. And so right now, uh, Kittleson, who does the majority of our traffic stuff for both the city and county, is putting together some concepts, which I guess are going to be coming in, I think, next week, just to make sure everything works. Because there was also some talk we were going to take access off of the parking lot just north of the extension service there. And then trying to make sure that just trying to make sure that we go forward, like this, as Mr. was saying, we're, we're all thinking this through so that we don't wind up, why well, we should put that here instead of there. So, but I think right now it's not like we're pretty much all in agreement that we're going to go to the north end of that. And then some minor shipping around of access to perhaps if necessary. I'd love to close the road off from the senior center to that. <laughs> I <would>. Yeah. <clears throat> so that it's. Right, I mean, it's, it's perceived it's a, that there's a road that goes through the foregrounds and it's, it's not it, a road. It's a, it's a parking lot, but it's right. perceived as a road from BTS and... It's used as a road. It's used as a road, but it's a, actually, it's a, our parking. But anyway. and, and where and tear occurs. Oh, yeah. At whose cost? Right. Yours. Correct. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so, when will you hear about the grant? I'm not sure. Uh, that was just the initial ask. The, the grant process has it. Mm -hmm. It hasn't started yet. So I will say, so we've applied yeah. in two different two different places. So we've applied um, with through congressionally directed spending. So that is something that we got a that's through Congress, and then we also made a capital construction request from the Oregon Legislature. So uh, that's in as well. So and, and both of the asks were the same. So just 
keep applying until you, until you get it. I would say in the meantime, we need to continue design work, right? Meeting with all of the different, different folks. And there are dollars, I think, that comes up with the design because regardless, we're gonna have to figure out how to get it done and continue to work on grants and those types of things. So that's, that's the idea. Um, I, I will also just say, um, I think the grants are really important. It makes this, I mean, it, it makes it a huge profit center for the fairgrounds if it's completely paid for. If it's not, um, it doesn't necessarily scare me either. You know, um, if I was coming at it for, as, as an individual, I would put together what's my <coughs> cost of rehabilitation versus my you know, gross rents. And I mean, I would just, just pencil it out, pencil it out and, and make sure it works so that I can afford to, to give them the type of remodel that they're looking for. So, well, and, and all of the entities. And what, am I, what are my rents going to be? And so then what's my margin? So if I can make 6% or 7%, then that's are, are they selling trigger their pull property? all day long. Are numbers. they selling their property on 6th okay. Street? We already gave it away. Like return. Would you give it to you? Sixth Street. So the one over there uh, of uh, Hilliard and mm -hmm. Thirty Nine, KCC is building a child care center there. Oh, okay. So we. Oh, so let me let me let me rephrase. The county bought it from the Extension Service District so that they could get their money back, and then we donated it to KCC. They're not out anything. Right. No, no. I was just. Yeah, we actually said, and and I believe it was. That's how we determine the price. Oh, yeah. What are you in it all together? We'll write you a check for exactly that amount, and then we donated it. So they're going to build their their child care school there. <laughs> so, no, but I want to keep on going around the room. I agree with Greg. I think. And it's who are you? Oh. <laughs> yeah, <cool. laughs> I agree. I think it's, it would be beneficial to the fairgrounds, but I am a little worried that it might cost us a little bit, maybe in employees and maintenance. So. Maintenance. Sure. So what was a roof bid? Did we get a roof bid? Was it like so, astronomical? So currently the roof, um, Glenn Gregory with County Maintenance is dealing with roof. Uh, the initial estimate on the roof was around 225000 um, Since then, the prices went up. Um, there is talks that there could be something within a layer of the roof that could add even more cost. He's waiting on a secondary um, inspection to see if that is actually there um, to determine what the actual cost will be. So, But I believe the county is handling the roof. Is it right now? As, as of right now. Yeah. Well, let's get a really nice one then. <laughs> <laughs> the 200 year roof. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. a long time. Uh, Who are you? Uh, I am Derek Rowley, manager of the fairgrounds. Might as well just do this. Who are you? Terry Schallers, Fairport. Ryan Bryson, Fairport. Cool. Now it went out, we can just go. <laughs> Additional thoughts from the Fairboard? Really, I just want to go all the way around and give everybody an opportunity to talk to us about it. what. What does that leave us in that building for rentable space besides OSU? Do we know? Uh, 7,000 square foot. Additional? Mm -hmm. Wow. So a lot can be done. And a kitchen, because that would be accessible to the fair board as well. I'll tell you, current, um, <clears throat> currently, folks interested in renting the space, obviously OSU Extension would, would be the anchor tenant. Um, Klamath Grown, Healthy Klamath. Um, am I, who am I missing? There's one more. That's really it. That's Those it. three, okay. Are also interested in renting space, and then there's going to be space that will be left over for the fair grounds to use, however you guys want to do it. So as or, a, or, or rent it to somebody else and, and just make it a complete rental. As it stands right now, I think OSU Extension is looking at 9,000 square foot, I believe. Um, Klamath Grown. Healthy Klamath, they're looking at, I think it's about 5,000, 4,000 something, 5,000. That's with the certified kitchen, which would leave us 6,800 or 7,000 square foot right in that area. But that's to use that's for your stuff. Well, that's that's not space get another tenant. That's not taking any mezzanine in that. Correct. Right. Or any add ons. Right. And OSU Extension is prepared to, even if they have to pay for their remodel, they're prepared, speaking with Terry Gallagher, they're prepared to. 
immediately begin to pay the yearly lease, even though they're dumping all the money into a remodel, if they have to pay for the remodel, mm -hmm. which is a considerable amount of money uh, per year. It is. So, I mean, in my mind, the upkeep and maintenance is what the only thing the OSU extension would be requesting in all of this is just we need to define what maintenance looks like because I know county maintenance and our maintenance is completely different. Sure. Um, so is it hanging pictures? Is it fixing desk drawers? Is it, you know, like what, what does that look like? Because mm -hmm. I know county maintenance is a little different than, than, what all do. than what we do. I'm not saying we can't do it. It's just, you know, we got to kind of have all that laid out. Let's see what it looks like. And it could so. be part of the, the county maintenance program still. If we, I mean, we just have to look at it all. Mm -hmm. So right. they would just have to pay into that. So one other thing that was brought up when we were talking about this in the past, mm -hmm. and I'm going to bring it up now, is what about incorporating Kiger into this and making it a one big complex? I can wear two hats here, but I have. A absolutely. And I, I, I would say we can talk about that in 2028. Weird. Weird. Because <laughs> I won't be here. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure someone brought that up to me yesterday. Yeah, pretty sure. Yeah. Pretty sure. Weird. I will say this. Kiger is a community gem. An absolute community gem. And uh, I would like to, at some point, somewhere down the line, figure out a way to get it some stable funding to get the TLC that it needs and really be treated as a community gem. Right now... I don't believe that the fairgrounds or the county has adequate funding to take it on because it is um, what do they call it? A financial anchor, maybe. I, 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 it, 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 <laughs> it doesn't generate any money. That's for sure. Yeah, so it could. So if we could come up with a plan to where it was self-sustaining. Like we're do like we're, the conversation we're having here. We're talking about a building and making it self-sustaining. Or actually, I believe it will become a profit center. Um, then I think that's an entirely different conversation. Um, there are conversations right now around doing some type of a rec district, um, which really I, I believe that the fairgrounds will be a big part of that conversation, uh, as far as um, who is. involved in making sure that it's managed and operated correctly uh, because of the talent that we have at the fairgrounds. So they'll I'm not saying that it'd be there, but they'll be part of the conversation. Um, that conversation will also include things like Steen Sports Park, Spence Mountain, most likely like Ellerick Pool, um, Little League Field. Little League Fields, more park, you know, trail systems. Things like that are really big community pieces and assets as well as programming and things like that. So I believe that it's, it's part of that overall conversation that's just not one that I'm really ready to dive into today, if that's fair. Fair enough. So, yeah, today it's probably not the point <coughs> of today's conversation, but I love it. And I absolutely want Kiger. And I think it would uh, even expand the fair's footprint even more. We've talked many, many times about the fair board being right in the center of it all and let's make it like the activity hub of Klamath County, but you're landlocked. There's not really opportunities to expand that footprint. So any opportunity we get to expand that footprint, I'm in. I'd love to have Kiger be a county asset that was part of a rec district that included exactly what he said. Um, Spence Mountain, Kiger, Steen Sports Park, Little League Fields, add all that into a rec district so there's a sustainable funding source. But I, I think about redoing Crest Street with sidewalks and walkways and a sky bridge over to Kiger Stadium so you guys could have um, concerts. You could, you, could do all kinds of, you could do all kinds of stuff there. Um, that would expand your parking facilities. You could, you know, during fair, you could park stock trailers over there to get them out of the way. You could do all kinds of really cool stuff to expand the footprint to include Kiger. Um, really work with Oregon Tech to do some really cool stuff there. I know Oregon Tech's involved anyway, but I think that could be expanded a little bit. So I'm 100% on board with the county having Kiger as a county asset. Um, but it's not today's conversation. We're going to talk about it building, but I love it. And I'm, I, I, would, I would, uh, would do anything to make that a reality as well. Mr. Bryson? Yeah, so when this first came up, I think it was in January, all this started. There was there was no talks of grants at that time, but there was talks of 
the county be re getting reimbursed for the amount of money that they put in to fix this program up or this building up. And that was, to me, concerning because we're, we're, at, a, we're at a point in, at the fairgrounds that we're actually making some money now, and we have other projects in the works that kind of rely on that. So I immediately started throwing up red flags of what's that going to do to that to that money that we're already kind of allocating to other things. And now we're talking grants. So grants uh, are a good thing. I'd be curious to see if there was any match on that, how that match is going to be. We talked about Glen Gregory and County Maintenance. There's fees associated with that every year for internal fees that you have to pay to have those buildings maintained. So there's a lot of numbers that need to come up uh, before we can sit down and say that this is even close to penciling out being something that we are on board. I mean, I like the, I hope it pencils out. I think it would be a great asset and great extension to the fair. Um, but I think there's still a lot of unknowns that we need to see what those are before. Uh, I just one vote, but before I would vote yes on it, I want to see that it pencils out. I don't want, I don't want to invest in something that I have to continuously invest in. At some point, it's got to pay for itself, right? So. I think I think you're spot on, and I, I agree with everything you said. I think what I'm more looking for today, and Commissioner DeGroote might have a different read on this, but I'm looking for a head nod from you guys that says, I like the concept, let's explore it. If you all say today, absolutely not, we want no part of this, then we're going to go a different direction. But I don't think a decision has to be made today. We don't know what the numbers look like, and what Captain Bryson said is exactly right. I wouldn't be supportive if this was a loss for the fair board. But I at least would like to see you guys like the idea. Let's continue to talk and explore it and make sure that we continue to maintain open conversation with each other so um, we know what each other's doing and we're playing by the same rules, so to speak, as we explore this further. For me, I, I like the idea. I like it. I. Uh, I like it too. I think it's. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a no-brainer when you start figuring about all that stuff, and then, I mean, even if it started, if you're, you know, you start doing your dollars and cents, and if you're close at the first, eventually it's going to turn that corner, if you will, especially if you got a good anchor tenant with it, that signed into a long-term deal, I mean, it starts, it starts penciling pretty quick, pretty easily, yeah. from the rough numbers that I've run on my own, but, uh, you know, obviously, once we see the final dollars and cents, we make the final decision. But I don't have any reservations of moving forward. You guys get a head nod from me too. Then we can explore Kyger another awesome. day. Yeah, when it comes to anchor tenants, it doesn't get much better, right? No. <laughs> right. And they're going to be, they're, they're also, yeah, working on, on grants and, and coming well, up with funding, and they have some money. I mean, all of it's going to, I'm not scared. At all, and I think that we can all agree in the room that <coughs> we're dedicated to improving the fairgrounds. I think we've demonstrated for sure that we're dedicated to improving the fairgrounds. So the last thing that we would want to do is do something that would hurt the fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. Mr. Vaughn, I'm Rick Vaughn, Clown County Property Manager. I just want to add, I was kind of on the front end of, of the process of this. Uh, property purchase and it was not for solely a home for the extended purpose. It was not solely for ex extra uh, space for the fairgrounds to rent. What it was, if you want, if, if, if such a thing existed as a 50 or 100 year plan for the fairgrounds, where's your space coming from? So my pitch, which it was not 100% well received at first, was th this is an expansion future expansion space for the fairgrounds that we need to secure that. How are we doing? We need to figure out how to secure that. And that was the initial push. Correct. And then we kind of went in and out here on the funding of it. We got very lucky with ARPA funds that now we've got that secured. Check on that part, we've got the property sitting there for nothing other than future expansion of the, the fairgrounds. We got, there was initial conversation about, we need that building to be torn down and go away. Oh yeah, and and, <laughs> and we moved to to other concepts, and and I think I'm the culprit that drug DJ back into this, when when we had the the funding issue on how we how the the fairgrounds was looking to carry it on a note, and and that all kind of blew things up. We got past that with the ARPA funds, mm -hmm. and so I said it's still to me 
let's let's get the conversation back in and how do we take a chunk of this and it becomes a, a generating source for the fairgrounds, which is more rental space, which I think you need. And then the anchor tenant and paying, that was all, that just all grew on itself. Mm -hmm. the, it just, we're a long ways from having this, this uh, to put on the table for everybody to say, here's, here's what we need you to approve. We have, we have a, a meeting this afternoon, actually, this afternoon, yeah. where we're looking at how do we present this better to, to our county board, to the fair board, to the community. Here's what the vision is. We're, we're working on that part now to say, here's what we're trying to present to everybody and get everybody behind. And some design work would help with that. That's right. You know, being able to show, hey, this is what it's going to look like. Here's a picture. Yeah. Was was Rick reintroducing the bulldozer concept? Of the he was not. Uh, <laughs> no, he was not. I wasn't. I'm going to tell you right now. Just let Second it sit there until we can sell it, then I'll buy it. But <laughs> I, I think, obviously, everybody's ex uh, showing a lot of uh, patience here, and it, it is mm -hmm. a big ball to get rolling. And I think yeah. we're. We're a lot of work to do, a lot of moving parts. It's just going to take time. Well, and that's that's kind of where the fairgrounds was this last summer when we were looking at purchasing the building. Is you know our goal was to just acquire the prop, you know that piece of property. We weren't really planning on anything with the building. You know, and everyone people had some different ideas and everything, yeah. but in the end, the way it was going to have to be paid back with the purchase, with the projects we have going on, like the RV park. Uh, and I think that that was a misunderstanding. I don't think anybody was ever expecting the purchase price to be paid back. We were only talking about how do we fund, if it needs to be done through a loan, the remodel of the property. Anyway, that was my yeah. understanding. It was never about buying the property. It was about <coughs> the cost of remodeling it. We're not able to get grants. Is some of it gonna have to be borrowed? Is OSU Extension able to, yes, and by the way, yes. Um, you know, what are we going out for grants? It was brainstorming about how we pay for two to $7 million worth. That's a lot. That's a lot. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> not when you're talking about capitalizing it, right? No, no. I mean, it, in the long run, if it pencils out, you know, it, it'd be yeah. an absolute win. Um, it's just, you know, you got to see it. Yeah. Right. It's not a, anyway, it's it's not an expense. It's just the, no different than if I went to go buy an apartment building right now, which, kind of, which we're not. <laughs> Anybody's watching. But I am, if you have some for sale. <laughs> so, no, I mean, I'm 100% I'm on board. Always looking to buy something. Yeah, I'm always on board for, for something. I want to say, uh, as, we, as we wrap up, um, a lot of stuff going on in the legislature. I've been there um, a lot lately. Um, the cap removal, uh, if you've been keeping up with that, um, in order to get more dollars into the fairgrounds, it looks like it's getting... Um, good steam. I do believe that it's going to be an 80%. It's not going to be 100%. Some money is going to get peeled off for, for horse racing. I don't think that that can be prevented at this point. Yeah, that was added. Uh, that was a little bit of a thrown in there. So it's it's probably time just to take the win because uh, okay. it's, it's, it's going to be a this or nothing type. Uh, thing, so. You know, and I, and, and I think that all boils down to the Oregon Fairs Association and what they want to do, but I would assume that they will take it as a win. I mean, mm -hmm. if they don't, then... It's time. There's going to probably be some problems. Uh, and then there's a bunch of uh, other capital type stuff. And uh, we've made sure that Climate County is part of that conversation and trying to get you another couple million bucks. So I'm supporting the bill can. Monday that would provide uh, infrastructure funding to fairgrounds that utilize those facilities for emergency management during um, during disasters. So that was 10 million bucks. Yeah, it was 10 million. We supported that bill. So I'm interested to see how that plays along. And since ours is part of our evacuation mm -hmm. plan, mm -hmm. that would open up some infrastructure dollars for our fairgrounds. So I'm excited to push that one along. So more to come on that. And There's that's through that's through Business Oregon yes. that will be handling that, yes. which yes. is who yes. we all, all fairgrounds across the state receive the $277,000 for, for the, those projects. We're talking about doing the maintenance check. Yes. We brought that up through public safety and support that bill to the legislative committee. We supported that bill to exec. So yep. AOC has, has taken up support of that. So that's good. Yeah. No. Yeah. Good stuff happening. So anyway, y'all have anything else? Cool. We'll make sure if that's easy.
Alright. <laughs> as long as we roll for, uh, same game. Easy stuff. Cloudy vision, then that's good. Dave, I liked your vision of Crash Tree. I, I know, like man. Let's do it. It's good. Let's add that. It's cool, huh? Super cool. You know, we'll Almost do all this stuff. We'll, uh, we'll revamp the community, the parks, the trails, the fairgrounds, all well, this. And then we'll is it a lot? Short term rental. So, cool. Well, I'll come stay here. <laughs> awesome. 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 awesome awesome idea <laughs> yeah. thanks for taking some time this morning I really short term rentals as much you. as you want thank, thank you. you good hey I'm not a I'm a risk taker yeah we're done so I'm gonna break you're off break nice we'll fix that good for you see you buddy see you okay see you at 3 o'clock always fun oh it's good to see you my friend alright be good yep darn are we next on this alright it's good to see you Take care. Good to see you. Yep. All right. Later, guys. I've been the budget. Oh, shh. Thank you. I'm not sorry. up again. That's been my third time. Boom. All right. See you guys. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. See you guys. See you, Terry. Good to see you. Let's talk more. Okay. We are jumping into budget. Nope. It's just a continuation. It's on. Yep. So we just fun rolling. Yep. All I'm gonna need. Yep. Let's do. I'm not gonna cancel that. Me too. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I don't do this. I don't do this. Okay, great. That sounds great. Thank you, Dave. And you remember how to log on? Yes. Okay. You only had to show me three times. So I got it for three times. You can talk to the AV guy at, at IP. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't listen to me, though. Okay, you want to see your PC? Say win. Pretty sad. Are you ready, Vicky? Or? Yeah. Okay. You okay. Leave it like that? Yeah, it's fine. Who's who's is that? That's not me. That must be this. How do you switch that over? Uh, it needs to be her. <laughs> Let me help you there. How's Thank that? You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, were, you were having a little trouble. So we have to get to a point today where we can send a budget to the budget committee. We're recording, right? So I can just go yeah, while you're doing that. We are okay. recording. So that we can send a budget to the budget committee. Am I right, Vicki? You're that's, right. That's where we need to get to today. So uh, just to recap, we were going through this Case. end of last week. What day was that? I don't even remember what day we're on anymore. It, it was, was anyway last week. Um, can we try HDMI? Friday. Where we were going through the budgets and looked HDMI? at the deficit. And it essentially, I, after looking at it, it was so big, could I just threw up my hands and said, sure. somebody else take a look at this. I'm, I'm not doing it this year. Um, or I, I can, but everybody will hate me. So um, hopefully we've had an opportunity to kind of take a look at it and see if there is um, ways to get it in line so that it's palatable in order to be able to refer it to the budget committee. Uh, I will just reemphasize that a deficit spending in the, to the tune of $6 million won't make it out of this room. Okay, if, so since we only have two votes in the room, I can tell you it will not make it out of the room. Commissioner <laughs> Minch should be back any minute. <laughs> no, I think that her input's going to be. It's going to be important, but. Okay, so um, I did a little work since we met last. 
Um, a little. This is all we've talked about. <laughs> I'm really excited. And by the way, thank you uh, for, for, for working on it um, and apologize for my frustrations last week because I was just done. It's all right. We seem like we're just working on this every year. So, um, let me get this fixed. Okay, so I talked with Monica. Monica figured up a carryover from this year that I don't have budgeted in the non-departmental of $760,000. Okay. Um, the I had assumed $400,000 before I talked to her, so I built $400,000 more into the general fund, beginning fund balance, and expended it to the patrol. So that is already in the numbers that if you do you have are you able to open the um, shared drive so if you look at patrol expenditures um, or if you look at the general fund non-departmental expenditures it includes an additional four hundred thousand dollar transfer will you get me there um, Oh, it's not updated. There it is. This is what we're going to talk about today, all those things there. So, um, pardon? Do you want me to? Okay. Um, so, there's a few things that I learned since Friday. The property taxes, I went ahead and did a, a look back to 2015 to see if I could increase the property taxes in the non-departmental. And they're all over the place. Some years we receive 7% higher than the year before. Some years we, we go, we receive less than 1% from the prior year. And a lot of that depends on the drought. It depends on mm -hmm. the economy, huge. Mm -hmm. Um, so the, the medium of, median of that is 3.5%. So I did increase the property taxes a little bit, gave that increase that I built into non-departmental to the sheriff's office to try to make their um, cut back on how much they need. Um, and then Fish and Wildlife Grant, I missed $12,000 in the revenue in the non-departmental, so I added that. Um, the cigarette tax, um, it had grown during COVID a little bit. I don't think in this economy at $10 a pack, we're not going to see the same revenues from cigarette tax. So I bumped that back and I don't think we should change that. So you'll see that that's not the same. And also alcohol revenue has been, um, it went from 380 to 450 during COVID. 450, 475. This this year the alcohol revenues are down so that's why that's less so i wanted you guys to know why i backed off on cigarette and alcohol tax revenue mm -hmm. and i don't think we should go back up because this year the projection for this year is four hundred and um three thousand and i'm budgeting 425 for next year um we also need to talk about the parks because Spence Mountain is being transferred to the Parks Department, and we haven't built in a transfer to Parks to pay for Spence yet. Just the, the, the fees that need to be paid are $13,515. That's the annual fees that Stephanie will have to pay to the state. So the general fund has to cover that. That's not built into the non-departmental yet. Um, I figured up a 3%, um, you know how the sheriff presented patrol and corrections with um, material and service, uh, at, uh, material and service ask. I went back and figured up what it would look like if we took the current year amended budget and changed all of the material and service costs in both of those sub departments to 3% and to 5%. And here are those, those figures. 
in patrol, a 3%, moving all material and service to 3% would save $642,000. And in corrections, it would save $218,256. The only other areas that I can think of to bridge the gap is a couple of vacancies. So um, I've been, I talked to Brian a little while ago. They currently have eight correction deputies vacant. Um, oh, and what I what I just okay. So that's that's what's in your 2324 budget right now. Yeah. There's eight correction deputies vacant, and that was done a month ago. It does include Cook, and it includes the, the hyphenated last name again. Yeah includes those two people other than other than those two people and without the two that we the new ones that were requested there are eight vacancies so um at the time that that was presented it's not autumn nielsen brunston faith maples we fired one two three four I think Good. we hired four of those. Okay, so we have four vacancies. So truly hired or made job offers? There's city in uniforms working today. Perfect. So okay, so I, there's four vacancies. Job offers right now are um, through job offers right now. The conditionals, add those in for me, please. The, the what? The conditional job offers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, In the jail, um, we have four in background right now. Okay. And so that takes you to fully staff. And, and we, have, successful, right? we have one, yes, and we have one leaving in two weeks if you if you've noticed. Okay. So we'll have five right there. Um, Which we don't have so, approved yet. Okay. So, and then we have that, that so the four in background, and then um, that would leave two open right now um, on the jail site. Okay. So, so I, um, I figured the cost of a vacancy in, um, if, if we want to take away a vacancy in corrections would be $86,201. If we wanted to, um, there's a vacancy in animal control that might not happen. Um, we have to wait and hear from uh, HR within another week and a half or so. There could be a savings there of ninety-three thousand. So um, this spreadsheet shows all the changes that I just um, mentioned and where we're sitting right now. Um, if we did the three, per if we changed all the materials and services to three percent instead of what's being requested. Um, the sheriff's office would still be short 313,000. The general fund is short 865,000. Um, I could reduce the reserve going into the proposed budget down to 3.1 million. That's not enough cash to get us through. Um, and I put pray for pilt. <laughs> I don't necessarily like the word pray when we're talking about budgeting. I mean, I. I, I you don't mind if I do that, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 I still will, but I don't know if that's necessarily good stewardship. So <laughs> we're not gonna we're not gonna do that. <laughs> and the reason this worked last year is because last year we had twelve million dollars of cash that we could that we could rely on to ha have until the property taxes rolled in mm -hmm. because we had this um, LATCF in there. We don't have that in there this year. Right. It's in a reserve, Where it as discussed, um, and so not having $4 million in a reserve for non-departmental is a problem. So let me ask, Does this? what does this assume for transfers from either LATCF or um, There's no robust. road fund transfer, and there's $2.2 million transferred from LATCF okay. into patrol. And that's assumed already? 
That's assumed. That's assumed in, these numbers. in this. So this, this budget wasn't written taking that out. That assumption was made when this budget was put. So, and then I want to understand correctly. So then the total of what we're short after that in order to get the general fund to balance is, am I get 1.178? So we still have uh, either unicorn revenues of 1.178 or we need to reduce expenses by 1.178 in order to balance this out. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to or make sure I understand this. Or we need more revenue of 1.178. Right. You can come revenue. up with that. Right. <laughs> oh, that's what you said. <laughs> um, so my thought is if you're even entertaining the thought of reducing materials and services to a 3% increase from um, the amended budget this year is you'll really need to take a closer look at what that means. Um, this line for example is the Tyler Technology software that is a future cost. Um, I, According to um, Monica it's not a given that it will be done in the 23-24 fiscal year. It could be the 24-25. Um, if you take 3% of the current amended year budget, that goes away entirely. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think, I mean, this is these are things that the sheriff can discuss in the, in the hearing when it comes up. This isn't written in stone. We just have to balance it. And then when we get in the hearings, things what was, change. What was the overage? One point what? 1.178. So you say 1.2. Because I would. But that's if you change to three percent. Okay, so so some of these you, we really need to look at because I'm going to throw a monkey wrench, and you know this is coming. I know. I told you I was going to bring it up. Okay. Okay. Ready. So. Okay, I'm not an accountant either. I'm not a mathematician, but I do have some questions that I want to just bring up, and I I I. I'm not optimistic that this is realistic, this budget cycle. This, I think, if I'm correct and we were able to do things a little bit differently, wouldn't occur until next year. That being said, I still want to bring them up because um, I'm going to be around another year. And I, maybe this is kind of uh, rhetorical. I'm not, don't know that I can really ask you for the answer today, but I'm going to, I'm going to ask it as a, as a question. What does it look like? At the end of every year, let me back up further. Um, I spent hours and hours and hours going over the sheriff's budget, line by line, and looking at current rate of spending, what they're spending, what I think their anticipated um, savings would be, and every single line item. I also took into account um, as their, let's say, um, computer software. I'm just making one up based on what they've spent on computer software and letting that projection play out, I was extremely conservative and some of those numbers I let go way in the hole, which I know you won't do. So when you get to a point where you're like, well, let's just not buy that piece of computer equipment this year because we're $20,000 in the hole, there was a lot, of, a lot of things in materials and services that the Sheriff's Office has direct control over that spending. You don't necessarily have direct control over personnel services because you don't know when somebody's going to get hurt, who's going to leave, things like that. But materials and services, you do. So I let a lot of those play out and go very negative, which isn't a reality because I know you wouldn't do that. My point is this. The numbers that I came up with and what Monica and the sheriff, so I, I don't know who all does, your, I'm assuming Monica does most of it. Our numbers are super, super close. I mean, surprisingly close. And I recognize that the sheriff's office budgets very well. That's what I learned in this process. So I'm glad I spent a lot of time doing that. But I also recognize that they have money left over at the end of every year that just goes back to the, the um, general fund non-departmental. So what does it look like if you rewarded that to the sheriff's office? And you said, hey, you guys ended your year with $500,000 in salary savings, or you didn't buy this, or you didn't buy that. We're going to roll it to next year rather than it just go to this non-departmental and then balance or zero out their budget. It rolled to their budget to offset the next year. Then this isn't 1.2, it's 700. It gives them a more palatable starting point knowing that that money rolled. 
Um, so that was one thing that I was really interested to take a different look at. Number two, um, the capital improvement project. The sheriff's office does an outstanding job, in my opinion, at looking at future reserve expenditures and saying, okay, I, I had a meeting with Captain Bryson and he walked me through his vehicle replacement schedule and, and what he thought they needed. And I thought that that, that plan that he's coming up with is, was solid. And they need to purchase assets. We can't provide services to a community without assets to do that. And their plan to make sure that they can maintain those assets has to be in place. That's a necessity. But what if that burden was the county's burden to bear, not the individual departments? So they're, they're trying to save, and I'm looking at many budgets, so forgive me, Monica, you know these numbers better than me, but they're trying to plan for buying vehicles in their budget. But what if the county had a capital improvement plan and the sheriff's office and all the departments called on that 10-year outlook plan and we budgeted that separately outside of the individual de departments? So there's another, what did you guys in here, 600,000? So there's another six on top of the five they're going to save. That's 1.1 million rolling into next year. So there's, there's that to consider as well. And then, it's not popular, I get it, but I'm gonna say it. Um, cap materials and services at a threshold, whatever that is, if it's 3%, that's just the cap. And then it allows them to play within those, those confines of what that increase is. And then the second thing that's not popular, but I'm gonna say it anyway, internal service charges. If you eliminated all these internal service charges charges away from the sheriff's office, that's hundreds of thousands of dollars that is realistically a dollar overinflated in our budget. So it's a dollar in their right pocket, the county's putting in their left pocket, but we make them account for it and that, that, that number is huge. If you eliminated that number, you eliminated their need to budget for capital, the county absorbed that through the general fund cap materials and services at 3% and allow some rollover beginning balances, their budget's balanced. Okay. Doesn't make any sense. Monica? You might disagree on a few points. Do you wanna hear them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when um, our car radios that we're forced to put take out of materials and services go up 5%, how do we go about? About making sure there's fuel in the vehicles when they're going up 15 percent. Capitalize, goes into CIP. You don't have to worry about it. Then you'll have to lower your capitalization project. Exactly, to five thousand, not ten thousand. And then that makes me have to come before you much more often, because it's not ten thousand. You get to come see me for. I have to come see you to spend five. But it would be built in a plan that was approved by the board, so you have authorization. Provided that plan spend. was there. Correct, and then you'd have authorization authorization approved through the CIP to to buy all year long. You wouldn't have to come before the board. Trying to make your life easier, not not harder. You didn't say, talk about the plan to, that we get <laughs> that, pre authorization. In, well, that would have to be a capital improvement yes. plan that we budgeted outside of your guys'. So you'd, you'd have to come in and say, this is what we need in our budget, and here is our seven year outlook on a CIP. And that CIP would be approved every single year by the commissioners, but we would still know the six out years. Yes. And Which, there's some variables in there for some equipment that is now outdated that you can't, you have to replace. 15 instead of five, right, on that on that revolving capital outlay program that you would have. So Correct. There, there's some, there is a little bit of variable. We're still not going to, we're not going to go back <coughs> on, on the threshold. We're still going to not capitalize radios. It doesn't mean they can't be in your capital improvement plan, but in the accounting for them, we're not going to go right. backward to 5,000. But it could be built in. Tasers cost in, what, Brian, a thousand bucks now? Yeah, okay. Right, so a taser's not capitalized. 1,400? Yeah. There were 900 when I retired. So you don't capitalize your tasers, but your project, your overall project, may be $60,000, so it's built into a CIP. And then your CIP is approved at the beginning of every year. So so part of that, when we're talking like the radio stuff, uh, part of that is is we're relying on that that radio can come out and go into another vehicle. Well, we've got we've got 12-year-old patrol cars out there. I'm going to let that sink in for a second that we're still running these old radios that we cannot fix. You cannot get parts for them. When they're done, they're done, and you have to go out and buy a new one. That number is not inflated. 
If I ask for eight vehicles, I ask for eight radios. So those 12 year old vehicles that are still on the road, if I lose a radio, I have to figure out where I'm taking that five thousand plus dollars to buy that mobile radio from somewhere else. Totally agree. So it's not inflated. So is the the last thing I'll add is I am I am not as I sit here right now, I am not in favor of reducing staff at the sheriff's office at all. I think that we need to get ex extremely creative about how we look at dollars and cents on a piece of paper, but not lives of people and the services that we're providing the county through those lives. So I, I understand your point, Commissioner DeGroote, um, but m my mind will, will be to protect um, staff. And we gotta figure this out. As I did all of these, one thing I should have added that I didn't, as I did all of these, I made the assumption that y'all had 100% staffing no matter what. I did not even consider remotely eliminating the person. The, the vacancy that I'm talking about in the corrections department has to do with a corrections deputy that was moved into admin and is acting as a sergeant right now. Right. He's not on the books as a sergeant. He's receiving a stipend for that work. If he's going to stay as a sergeant, that's a new position. So the one I'm suggesting that we get rid of is the one he's going to vacate. I understand. So that's not that would be a new that position. That position is coming from admin. Our savings on the admin side. Captain's position that's in there. Talk about. And then the other piece of that is that sergeant. We we moved um, one sergeant from uh, the shift sergeant into an administrative sergeant role because we have uh, every two years we have to do a jail inspection, which is a minimum of six months to prepare for it. It is big, and there's 318 uh, jail standards that we have to go on. But part of that is also building into uh, showing proofs of all of that. It, you have to reevaluate um, uh, policies by jail standards, and so to leave that on just the lieutenant um, was is not is not a, it's not good. We would fail. So. We moved a sergeant into that that is actually a jail inspector and he has knowledge of this. Um, he helped me on it when we were doing it the last couple of times. And um, then to backfill that, we gave that other deputy the stipend to fill in as the ship sergeant while this was going on. So that's my point. If that mm -hmm. remains that, that way going forward, which it might, point. right? It, it we Yeah, we, we requested that because we have, when you're talking, you know, mandatory training stuff, who, who, who does that? Who sets up all the training? Um, who makes sure that, you know, motels are set and, um, you know, per diem is paid and all this stuff, you know, the paperwork turned into wherever the training's at. That's falling right now on the jail commander. Is the lieutenant doing that? That's not doable. <laughs> There's no time for that person to stay up on 36 to employees to, <laughs> to try and and try and stay up on mandatory training requirements and making sure that everybody is hitting those training requirements. So that's the other part of that uh, admin sergeant position that's temporarily in there right now. That's the other thing that he is doing. So if those things are budgeted, that will leave a big, a new position for uh, corrections. That's what you're saying. Um, and I want to respond a little bit to the uh, carryover. So I, I, I agree with what you're saying, and I'm not the voting people here, but I agree mm -hmm. that if they're going to save money this year, then yeah, they should be able to, to roll, um, it. roll it. It can't, for, from an accounting standpoint, it, it, it basically has been done every year. And the reason I say that is because the sheriff always comes in with more than what he was asked to target. So he's already he's already way over and beyond asking for any amount of money that was rolled over the year before. I understand that. Every year. But it would offset the, the deficit. This year? Mm -hmm. um, because it's, what, no, 500000 It's already being accounted for, though, isn't it? 400000 of it is. The other three hundred sixty I left in the non-departmental, because the non-departmental, we can't, we can't get through you half the year without it. So, so it's accounted for it. somewhere within the overall budget, right? Because I, I, I should just say, I think about the budget globally every year, right? Mm -hmm. I look at the entire county budget. It's not department by department. From sure. here. It's like, at the end of the day, what's what's the bottom sure. line? Sure. Um, 
I have in the past gone through line by line by line as, as you did this year and say, I'm going to take out $10 here. And I mean, I've literally done $100 at a time to try to find the money. It's exhausting. So I appreciate the work that, that, that you've done. Um, and I'm going to get on my soapbox for about two seconds. And then I'm going to get off and we'll start to figure out how we get there. Every year we talk about additional positions and every year I vote no. And we, I vote no because when we and when we're talking about all the different restructures and the adding positions, I say when I became a commissioner, and this is kind of to your point, I said, and, and this goes all the way back, and Captain Bryson, you'll remember this. Every year they handed out pink slips until they figured out how to budget it, and then they told them that they actually got to keep their job. And it was this absolutely horrendous way of budgeting that made it um, just a nightmare for the employees in the sheriff's department because they didn't know until the budgeting process got done whether or not they'd be able to keep their jobs. And it was just absolutely the wrong way to treat our people. So I said, I will never be that guy and I'm never gonna be the one to hand out pink slips, right? Um, if, if there's any way for me to avoid it. And every year when we talk about adding new positions, I say, I'm not going to vote for a new position because I'm not going to be the one that then tells them a year from now they don't have their job because this is not a sustainable budget. We are now at the point where we say, look, it's not a sustainable budget. I've been calling that for years. We will get to a point where we have to start saying we can't afford the people we have or we have to look at something, doing something differently. And um, I, w I will say, and I, I'm proud of the fact that I've been a part of a team that has found additional resources for law enforcement in Klamath County year over year for the last six years. And I think if you go back and take a look at the budget, it's reflective of that. I've been able to do that. Um, this year, I'm not doing it. I just, uh, at some point, we cannot continue to just reach for the stars and, and say, you know, we need more, 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 more. It just is, at some point, you just have to call time out. And it's just, we cannot do it anymore. Um, I am not a law enforcement expert at all, but budgeting is where I nerd out and I, I understand budgeting and what we can afford. I also am not going to say, um, I, I, I will say we're at a point now where I believe we can officially say we're out of the road fund, at least in my votes, forever. We'll never go back. We have $12 million in an LATCF fund that I believe would sustain us for a further five years, at which point we know we have projects that have already started that would then be able to pick up the baton from there and move forward. I'll go back and also say $12 million divided by five is not 2.2, it's 2.5. So if we want to call it 2.5, but it's exactly 2.5 for five years, I was trying to give it a little bit of growth year over year. So if we started at 2.2, we would end up at 2.8, you know, those types of things. But if we want to say it's 2.5 for five years, just know that every year that I'm in this chair, it's going to be exactly 2.5 and we have to make it fit within that. We've also done other things to try to make sure that we're going to get additional pilt over the next several years. Um, but until that's realized, it's absolutely, in my opinion, bad policy to just Pray say it's it. going to come, yeah, <laughs> or as you put on there, pray for Pilt. Um, I will pray for Pilt, and if it, it gets realized, That's great. it's going to be amazing, and we're going to have all these additional dollars that we can say, hey, we're going to do this in our community, and this in our community, and this in our community. But we're at a point today that um, the budget that we refer to the budget committee, I am only one vote, is going to have a maximum of two and a half million dollars from the LATCF fund, if that's where I will concede to that. It's going to have enough dollars for us to be able to make it in, in reserves that we need when we are going from um, July 1st to November 30th when we collect our taxes, which I think we plugged in three and a half million dollars. Is that correct? Was so that the number we ended up with on our Friday? For, for the, the money needed to be able to sit um, for us to have uh, in our operating reserves. So that we can pay our bills until we collect our taxes. Was it four million? So four million. So that needs to. That, that's what it takes. It's what it costs. Otherwise, you can't meet payroll, <laughs> right? We have to actually leave that in there until we collect our taxes. 
and I believe borrowing money to make payroll is absolutely bad policy. Sure. So um, I will just say, again, I'm not going to dive into the budget. I am not the expert. I will. I absolutely do not want to fund any additional new positions. If we're reclassifying positions from one category to another, that's fine. And if we can find cost savings in that, even better. Uh, but when we leave here today, if I'm voting for a budget, it is um, a maximum of two and a half million dollars from LATCF um, and balanced. And however we have to, whatever we have to do to get there, then that's what we have to do to get there. So, Vicky, what does it look like if we eliminate Tyler from their budget? And don't freak out. Just hypothetical, okay? If we eliminated Tyler from their budget, eliminated the patrol vehicles. Don't freak out. We need patrol cars. Okay, just, Fine. just bear with me for a minute. I totally am in support of what you've done here. Okay, and then cap materials and services at 3%. 100% okay. staffing. Okay. No new positions. Just, I, this is just patrol, so let's see. So if we eliminate Tyler, eliminate vehicles, or the capital, I should say. And roll over any savings they have, anticipated savings, to a beginning fund balance for them next year. What does that take All us? the savings? Every penny that they save okay. gets rolled over to a beginning fund balance for them. Okay. No new positions, 100% staffing, cap materials and services at 3%, eliminate Tyler and vehicles. <clears throat> Where does that put them? Um, give me two seconds here. Because I think that would actually start to cut into the 2.2 road funds that they have in their budget. No longer. Those aren't in there. LATCF. LATCF. We're out of the road fund forever. I misspoke, but you're right. I agree with you. And it doesn't need to be to the penny. Just kind of give me a ballpark. Two point five million. So that's a three hundred thousand dollars savings. Yes. So then, what if we took that three hundred and put it directly into reserves for any assets they need? Not there. What's that? It's not there. It'll take we're, in a, we're in a deficit. You can't take a deficit and move it to create a not deficit. No, but if you had, you just said 2.5 with LATCF, so you have extra money. But the LATCF was part of those numbers. No. Mm -hmm. 2.2 two is. 2.2 two two is, not 2.5. So the... So you're into the 2.2, two two, so if you rolled that 300 into assets, capital for them. 218000 is if the jail cuts to 3% in materials and services. Six hundred and forty two thousand is if patrol cuts back to three percent mm -hmm. in materials and services. So, um, six hundred and forty two or I'm sorry, um, seven hundred and sixty thousand is the carryover. The transfer to um, equipment reserve is a hundred and seventy two thousand in the jail. And Six hundred and forty in patrol. So that's seven, eight, nine million, um, two million, two point two million. That's two point two million. If all that happened. And they need one point what? They need this is the this the eight hundred sixty five up here is non departmental. The sheriff's office is three hundred thirteen thousand. So they need three something, and that's two point two. So that gets you a million, a million nine, nine extra. Extra. So then, if you went four percent materials and service, you're at a million five. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you you offset what they needed in capital, and you bury that in the reserve. 
that's eight, uh, nine hundred thousand, right? Mm -hmm. Their balances, their but that would balance their budget. Doing that, it let them to go four percent on materials and services, hundred percent staffing, and they still get to buy their vehicles that they need. And if they do Tyler, it would be there. And if they don't, we're plus one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Tell me how my how my idea is foolish, Monica. I'm looking to you. This your this is your wheelhouse, not mine. But just without you know sharpening our pencil and doing that, how does that not make sense? Still 100% staffing, still get you the vehicles you need, still leaves you room for Tyler, gives you a 1% buff um, increase of what we told all the other departments, and we don't spend as much LATCF. It's actually a savings for the county and the department's whole. But it doesn't include it would increase, new employees. Yeah, it would increase the uh, general fund shortfall to $1.2 million. Right. We'd still have the general fund shortfall. Because I put through 60 of their savings in the non-departmental. We'd still have, yeah. So there's still, we still have, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, again, there's I'm, no way to move, the, jockey this thing around when we have a set number that we had come out with savings. Mm -hmm. there, there's no way. You're, you're, you're taking a piece of a pie and you're taking this out and then making it a little smaller and adding to it and then adding to it. We still have a whole pie. I'm, I'm not, I'm. Right. Because the non-departmental, I mean, when I'm, when I'm talking, I'm talking a holistic budget. The non-departmental still has to be prepared as well. I mean, so it's just saying we're going to make this number smaller, but this number bigger. Okay. I mean, at some point, we just have to say we have to we have but to make he, reductions in expenses. What he's suggesting is we take out the transfer to the equipment reserve, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you take out the transfer to the equipment reserve, what how is are they going to buy eight vehicles? Yeah, because the transfer to reserve isn't happening. If we cut the vehicles, it's not happening. Because that's what our request was: was to transfer that money that we're planning on turn around and buying to the reserve. Mm -hmm. So where do they get the money to buy the Durangos if they don't that, that's, transfer the money? That's where we're. That, that's where I was having a little bit of a processing issue. Like I said, I this year I'm not going to be diving into the budget. I'm just telling you when we when we deliver the budget to, and I and I had a conversation with Sheriff Caber about this yesterday. Every year I dive in and figure it out. I'm not doing it this year. I'm just not doing it. But the budget that we deliver is going to be the revenues that we have plus 2.2 .2 to now I'm saying 2.5. That's new this morning of LATCF reserves. Let's figure out the budget. It all has to fit within that number, and we have to reduce expenses until we get inside that. Okay, how about this? The sheriff's about department this. is short 313000 we give them the extra 300000 that you're agreeing to bump up the contribution from LATCF. Mm -hmm. And then the um, difference in the non-departmental, we can um, um, reduce the reserve. Which reserve? The Is reserve the, for future expenditures in the non-departmental. One we pay our bills with. Yes, we can reduce that. There is no, I don't see any other way. Does this, the numbers that you're giving me include any uh, new positions or did we already account for taking all the new positions we took out? the new positions out except the one in animal control. There might be one in animal control, there might be one in the sheriff's office. It all depends on a person in am animal control that might be right. leaving. It, it, it depends on whether or not the board approves the sergeant and the admin person being permanent in their new roles. So Using the vacancy I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this admin. one more time because it makes complete sense, but I'm gonna shift how I say it. Okay. You eliminate all of their capital. 
So let's not panic for a minute or get angry. If you eliminate their capital, that's a big chunk of money. It's eight hundred six seven eight hundred thousand dollars So we keep talking about, we're just going to use LATCF money, okay? We keep talking about that. So just wait a minute. We have also said in many meetings that we didn't want to use LATCF money to sustain our budget to provide a service. We wanted to use that money for one-time hits that benefited us. Right. Okay, so keep that in mind as we finish this conversation. Allow them to have their rollover from year to year. Cap materials and services, I still think you could do 4%, not three. Let them, not let them, agree and provide 100% staffing, fund 100% staffing with no new positions. And then if you guys are talking about eliminating an animal control or something from jail, you can work that out later. But in my mind, keep it all exactly the same. There's a savings there over their current budget. That gets their budget balanced. And then if the commissioners wanted to drop LATCF funds into a capital plan for capital, which is what we've been talking about with LATCF, not services, because it's not sustainable, but capital, and we could plant what we needed into that reserve fund with LATCF for capital. Gotcha. It eliminates the need for the sheriff's office to try to plan for capital assets at the tune of nearly a million dollars. I'm going to go back. This is where I started that's this conversation. That's the piece I missed. Was that, that's the, that's the where LATC. I started this conversation. The, and I don't think we can get it done this budget cycle. But the county should have an asset plan that all the departments fit into. So they're not burdened with trying to show that. They just say, here's our 10-year outlook on what we need on it. Here's our vehicle replacement schedule. Here's our guns, our tasers. This is what all the departments need. And we approve that independent of them. And then when that's approved, we give them that money back into their budget with a green light to buy those assets. It might be 10 radios. So yeah, radio isn't $10,000, but the total project is going to take them into where we can just drop it into a CIP. That, that balances their budget. And then if we want to use LATCF for capital, if we need to fix a road, if we need to build a bridge, if we have Cascadia and we have to fix this building, that's our savings account. And I think that we can start we can start weaning us even off of LATCF, kind of looking at how we budget into the future with an, a, a, long, a long outlook. Um, I know that Brian's vehicle replacement schedule, maybe you've changed it, Brian, and I might be over speaking, so feel free to tell me I'm an idiot. But I know he needs more vehicles up front than he would need moving down the road. So I don't think they need 2.5 million dropped into a vehicle or a um, capital improvement project year to year commissioner. I think we wean ourselves off of that too, because we've got this, this seven to 10 year outlook on capital. Um, that even gets us in, in a conversation next year of, hey, we're gonna drop 2 million of LATCF into our capital improvement. Let's build this R compound. I mean, but let's get that, that I'll use the word liability. Let's take that liability out of each of the individual departments as they have to try to plan for those assets. So we're asking them to find a million dollars in their budget to plan for the future. We should do that. That should be the county's rule. So I think that concept balances their budget. I'm not saying we can't use or shouldn't or we wouldn't have to use LATCF, but it should be for capital, not, not just getting their, their budget balanced so they can provide a service. Okay, so increase or decrease the material and service across the entire general fund? Well, we told all the directors 3%, but I really do believe, um, now of course it would take me hours to go back and look at this again, I, I believe that they could go 4 and it would still balance. Across the entire general fund, so you want me to change all the general fund budgets? No, I'm just talking about this budget specifically. Okay, That's so let's say right Sheriff's Office is changed to 4% over current amended budget in materials and services over every department, um, and then we get rid of all of their transfers into the equipment reserve. Mm -hmm. And put 2.2 million instead of giving it, putting it in their budget from LATCF, we put it in the equipment reserve. Mm -hmm. 
and then they and give them can't the roll use over. the 640000 and the 172000 out of equipment reserve from the LATCF funds. Correct. And then they're beginning fund balance. Any rollover, any rollover dollars that they have. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay. I believe that would balance their budget. And okay. it would keep them whole. And it would leave the non departmental um, short by $1.2 million. So we're kind of in the same boat. We're in the same boat, but it's not their burden to bear. And we can look at this LATCF as asset based, not service based. But we're still short. I, I get that. Right. Right, but then we, we can have a short but short then we can have a conversation about assets, not people. Right now, we're talking about people. So, if the yeah. sheriff's office comes in in six months and says, "Hey, we want six hundred thousand dollars to buy ten cars," we can have an honest conversation. I'm not saying we we would tell you no, but now we're talking about assets, not people or services. I think I articulated it better that time. Captain? I agree. Um, so in that spreadsheet, the 2.2 is already in revenue. It is. Yeah, I see the back. We are. So our numbers are number the priorities change. And the budget that was presented was the budget that we look at and say, this is what we need for to provide a service. And that service is 24 hours. How many people we need to do it? Mm -hmm. That's why there is an additional three, I think it was on the two, two, two. And I and I, I totally get that. But you have, um, on our side, it is this is the money you have to work with in order to accomplish that. I don't know how you've accomplished that, but I know how much money we have. So it is on this side, and it seems like it's this is every year. It's like here's the target, this is what you need to budget within, and it comes back and it's millions of dollars over. I don't even want to look at that anymore. I never want to see it. I, I don't even. I won't even look at it again. I'm just tired of it because it's this. It, it's it's turned into a game, and I don't want to play anymore. Well, it's understandable, but it's also this is still the services that we need to get, and that number has come down a little bit over the years because right. that's that's because we've added a position right. here and a position there, and that's that's the number that we look at to say, 24 hour service. This is what. And I'll, and I'll say it publicly what I told the sheriff yesterday. Every year we've increased, I mean, over the course of the last six years, we've increased the sheriff's budget and staffing and everything. I mean, we've spent a lot. And I think that you would agree. We've been extremely supportive. And we've, but at some point, it on this side of the table, it feels like it doesn't matter. It'll never be enough. And so I'm, 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 I'm tapping out and saying, actually, it is. There is no more money. Cheaper than the alternative that was in here before us. I'm willing to look at any alternative at this point. It's like, okay, do we need to completely restructure the way that we approach law enforcement in this county? Let's have the conversation because the trajectory that we're on, at least the method that we use and the path that we're on, is absolutely unsustainable. So let's look at a completely new something. Something new. Somebody show me something. And you know, I told. Uh, Sure. Yesterday, because I was, I just started making phone calls around because I was trying to come up with ideas and things like that, and apparently I made some people mad. I said, I'm just trying to look for ideas. I'll tell you what, I won't come up with any more ideas. But what I will say is, I'm going to look at anything anybody else brings me, and I know how much money we have. And I'm going to figure out where I'm going to spend it. And if people aren't willing to show me ideas, their ideas within that budget, then I'll come up with one for them. And I'll fund I'll fund somebody else's idea. So, uh, I mean, you know what I mean? Because that's all I have. My only tool is the money. Correct. And, you know, and that's the the beauty of it. You know, I just said that two more deputies or three deputies, two, probably two, gets us to twenty four hour coverage. That's. But that was, I, and and I'll. From this side of the table, that's what I heard last year and the year before. And that's that's it sounds like the same message every year. And next year it's gonna be two Actually, more. Last year was and eight. Next, yeah. 
right? It's always, I need X more and yeah, I can more. get there. X more and I can get there. X more and I can get there. But we didn't get eight last year. No. So what does it but look like? But we got like? some. We did something. I can't remember what we did. I think we did. We need to go out and get funding for marijuana and get two. Yeah, marijuana. Right. And we got one. Two. That's a whole new conversation. And we did. We did right like there. some medical stuff or something. Like that. I can't remember exactly what it was. But anyway, we found. We found is every year we find more money for more people. No more people. How dare you even bring that up? Oh, it's new. It's blood orange. That's why. I'll bring it. She's always got good drinks. There's your fun. No, no, no. Okay, so um, so anyway. what does it look like? What? Um, <laughs> Commissioner Minty, I'll just kind of bring. wants to say it just yeah. to make you you steam come out here. But what does it look like if we eliminated all internal system. service fees across the entire county and made that up with LATC? I'm trying to figure out how to get there. Um, the two, 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 inter five. internal service for the internal service department is three point seven million. The, are you I've talking about facility it. services, IT, Budget. charges, all of it? Budget. All of it. Um, 2.9 million, so we've got 3.7 in internal services, 2, 2. Or, yeah, 2.9 million in facility services. Um, the IT is, I don't know, 2 million in IT, I could look. Let's just say 2 million. Um, Risk is 3.35, um, insurance is a million, and is that it? Uh, that's it. Three, six, five, seven, eight, nine, nine and a quarter million. That's not good. Um, Monica, without me dive in all the way into here we also there was also a conversation at one point about um, wrecked vehicles and whether or not that was going to be budgeted in your individual budgets or if it was going to be budgeted in, budgeted in risk how did we approach that in these we took your guys's uh, statement that it is on risk and we figured there'd be a cost savings on that because that the eight new vehicles be able to eliminate some of those liability on the vehicles. So that those numbers aren't in here? Is that safe for me to assume? In that, if you have the revised budget that we are speaking of today, that re this should be reflective. So there's not a chunk there? Okay. I was thinking maybe there might be a nugget there that we could still eliminate. But no, we covered maybe. that. Okay, conversation. Perfect, thank you. Because I agree that shouldn't be the liability. Okay. So, Commissioner Morris, while you were gone, um, it's been Who's suggested. Commissioner Morris? I, I don't even know who that is. Commissioner Minty, I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgive me. We need to lighten up. You're, not allowed, you're not allowed to change the rules in the middle of the game. I, I know, I know. You're like, she changed the rules so far, she changed her name. <laughs> I have been so good about it. I know. That's you're, you've been amazing. <laughs> I know. That's why I wanted to tease you. Okay. I wanted you to smile. So, the plan is to reduce the sheriff's office material and services across the board to 4% from the current amended budget. Take out all of their capital reserve transfers. Um, put 2.2 million from LACF TCF into the equipment reserve. Okay. And roll over 760,000 in savings that they plan on having this year into their budget next year. Give them a beginning balance. Yeah, I think those all sound like really good changes. And, and, and that maintains their 100% staffing. It does not eliminate a body. And I can't say whether or not that will pencil out until I do it. I, I think it will, but I don't know. Yeah, I think it'll be like super it. close. Yeah. The non-departmental still needs $1.1 million. So we're still 1.1 short. Well, yeah. It's so you're not gonna like this, but um, oh, I know I, I know it's coming. You, I'm you just, know what I'm gonna and say, and I'm gonna soapbox the hell out of the budget. Yeah. Committees. So <laughs> it, I mean, one option. I'm just yeah. I'm just thinking out loud. Okay. So one option would be to put 1.1 from road funds and control. Move 1.1 to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Okay. You say I know. So additional deficit spending. You can have me the headline. And I'm going to scream that for the And I'm going to keep saying it's not deficit spending when you got $12 million in LATCF funds in the bank. But 
It is. I mean, it's... Because that could be perceived as being a slush fund. Okay. Then What's that? My... Say that again. I'm sorry. Shh. No. Be quiet. <laughs> oh, it was one of those? We were talking about how we're deficit spending in bankruptcy. And I, well... Yeah, I know, I get that. He likes that term. I don't agree with that term. I, so, um, let, me, let me say this out loud real quick, and then I'll shut up. I, I really will shut up. And this is what I just whispered to Brian. Every year when the public is, is watching this process, they're going, man, our sheriff's office is using road funds, or our sheriff's office is doing this, or our sheriff's office. It, it, it's our burden to bear. It's the commissioner's burden to bear, not an individual department. And it's our budget. That burden is ours. And I really like this idea of rather than saying to our community, we're going to use our savings account, LATCF, to fund the sheriff's office to use for people and payroll, right, and all that. LA, our savings account, really, we should be able to control better. That's why I really would like us to shift our thinking that our savings account, we're going to buy one-time things that we need like I would at home. My savings account looks great, Benji. Let's build a barn. It's an asset. We invest it. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I really would like us to think about that moving forward because then we can control it. And I don't freak out and don't give me in a headlock, Monica. <laughs> but if we say no to the eight cars later, we can. But I don't want to say to them next year, you got to eliminate two people. It's easier to say we can't buy that asset this year. And I, I like all of that, Commissioner, and I think you said that really well. My only little thing I might say, to, well, I wouldn't even say anything differently. I like how you said all that. I would just offer that some people could say, you know, in government, you're not really supposed to keep a bunch of big savings accounts. You're supposed to provide service. Yeah, but they would also expect that we don't run our savings account to nothing. Right, but I think there's like sort of a happy medium, right. and, and that's this, where at this pace it will right. be nothing. And, and for you, and nothing. this is not a, and again, I don't, I don't have a differing thought on anything you said. It goes back to my friend how we had the deficit spending. I just don't think that's accurate. But it is. It it, it actually, technically, he's right because we are we are approving a budget that is negative, and our savings account will run out. It will. It's, it absolutely it's, will. If and it I'm never sorry. got replenished, but the but right now we don't have a plan to replenish it. But the experience has been, or the 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 path has been, every year something comes in yeah, that replenishes. Right. Well, you weren't in the room, but up there it says pray. It's like literally pray? says pray. Yeah, pray for Bill. We can't make a budget based on a prayer. I mean, I'm a God fearing man, but. No. Okay. And I'm I don't mean, yeah, mean to and I, and water I'll, this year. <laughs> You got I'm your just, wish. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a uh, well. Anyway, I, I've said what I needed to say. I, I'd like to propose that the I go back. I crunch the sheriff numbers with Monica's help. We come up with a balanced budget in the sheriff's office mm -hmm. based on what we decided, and you allow me to transfer enough into the non-departmental from LATCF to keep the reserve at four million, mm -hmm. and then. We see what happens with PILT in April or May or whatever, and we don't we don't make the transfer from LATCF. LATCF, Correct. we don't make the transfer Perfect. until we have until to we make have the to. transfer. Perfect. I would say I'm Let fine with that as long as the number that you budget transferred from LATCF doesn't exceed two and a half million dollars. Nope, two point two. Even better. Current okay, spending. so that that means that only one million is going to go into the equipment reserve. It's more than they need. Is it, oh, I'm saying it's it, more than they if, it, if the budget that we pass to the budget committee has zero dollars from road funds and no more than an obligation of two point two to two point five. I mean, current two, spending. I like that to lower, not increase. Two, two point two would be great from LATCF. If that is the budget framework, right, and I don't want to dive into everybody's individual budget to get there, nor am I blaming one individual department, then I would be I would be fine with taking that to budget committee so that we can argue about it there. All right. One more piece to that that I think. But you'll where both does agree that account on. for? And I'm sorry, but where I'm just trying to wrap my brain around. Where does that account? You said current, you know, same two point two, but inflation has went up so much. And I know, but let's try to save. 
That's just a conservative saving mentality. Let's not let it increase what we're, what we're taking out of our savings account. Let's try to save. Um, I would say if, that's, if it's a million that you just said, but as they initially budgeted, it was less than a million, then I would go with their number. Does animal control have a transfer? Okay, so, so just you, you corrections and patrol has a transfer into the equipment. Yeah, and it was like 960, right? 170 and 8, 640 is what I reduced it, or what you reduced it to. 640 and 170. Uh, so you know their numbers would be I less than a million. Be the, the FTE also may not increase it. For me, it would be expensive. From current uh, year? Current year. So that means... So we get to keep our caps in position. That's not in there. How In how, our current year, it's in there. Years. How? It's sitting there at no, I mean 23, 24, it's not in there. It got yeah. moved to corrections as a position, oh, to cover the vacant position of, from the deputy being moved to a sergeant. I I just said, that. so, so if you go to the bottom of the personnel spreadsheet. In 22, the, 23. The number that's at the bottom, that FTE number can't be bigger than the prior year. That's what I'm saying. Okay. So okay. in our current, current, you guys are saying the same thing. Yeah. Okay, just making sure that we are on the same page. page. You said you moved the FTE cannot FTE increase. FTE from 20, 23 24 can increase from 22 23. Okay. You all said the same thing. Yeah. Make sure. Is your budget like that though right now? If you reduce the four vacancies, it is. Other than the force upon position in our animal control. What about the sheriff? Um, sergeant or the correction sergeant that's coming from the captain position we did, it's vacant we did, all we, year so that the sergeant position that's an acting sergeant right now that deputy position that he he's still in it but he you know the vacated if you're looking at that that never got backfilled so he's a deputy doing an acting sergeant we never backfilled that to add an FTE into so what's your plan then to add a sergeant we we wanted to have in this budget that we proposed we wanted to have that admin sergeant so that they can do all the things the policies the training which and all is that no stuff. no fiscal change no fiscal Just, change. Title change and then promote that acting sergeant position to a full-time sergeant position with the deputy position not I, think you're doing. I don't believe that's in the budget though it is I mean you transferred it's, the money but the positions don't say that they yeah, don't it's, say it's, those it's, names it's, it's, there, I, that's the way I presented it. If the if um, HR didn't put it that make, make it reflect that way, then it's not like that. Well, you'll have to uh, it that is. Yeah, that's that's an easy piece that we can yeah. figure out. We don't need to do that offline. Yeah. So does that balance so, then? But I understand what you're saying, Mister. Just a status quo mm -hmm. on no growth on employees. Yes. But no what growth. We're currently on sitting at right. number X is number X. Yeah. So if it says. 48, I mean, I don't even know that. 50 and a half. If it says 50 and a half on this budget year, it says 50 and a half on this budget year. Okay. For the entire department. Not 48. Just making sure. I just. So the sheriff texted me just so everybody knows, the sheriff, he appreciates everyone's position on this whole process and what we're doing and looks forward to the budget hearings to be able to work out what he knows that we can accomplish. So we want to Thanks for watching, Sheriff. Fine. So, I'm just going to throw this out there. I want to make sure my point is really, really heard. It doesn't really involve the Sheriff's Office, but just the county in general. I really want a different process for capital improvement going into next budget cycle. I think you know, once this budget year is done, if we want to dive into a way of doing things differently, and, and I will bring up again that I would love to move this county into a biannual budget. Totally agree with that. You know, I. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the, so much easier. So there's two things with that. One, everybody gets a, a, a year off. We, I mean, we probably have to do like a check in. Um, on some stuff and maybe some minor tweaks and this and that and the other thing that we don't have to re, you know convene the entire budget committee for. Uh, and the other thing that it does is if we can put it on the right cycle, we can make it to where no person elected to one of these three chairs would have to start working on the budget three days after they swear in. Yeah. 
with absolutely zero background and no knowledge of what they're doing, which is the method in which we do things today. I will say my first year, I was, I mean, up all night, every night, trying to figure out what the heck was going on with the budget. And that's just, I think that's bad policy. And I'd like to try to figure out how to do it on the short cycle of the legislature, not the long cycle. The, the short cycle. Well, as long as it's even years. Well, it would have to be, yeah, it would, it would be even years because people take office in odd years. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to request that you all go back and talk to your um, the other 35 counties in the state of Oregon and tell them about that and try to figure out why only one county does it. <laughs> you already know the answer, but I still like my idea. <laughs> <laughs> one county does it. It's I know. Benton County. And they kind of like it. Oh, Zan's great. But they did this right and now. they did that <laughs> and it took 10 years to to figure that one out. Or Well, our partners long? just right down the street have figured it out. How big are they? Doesn't matter. Still, it was great. I, I will say, you I will, will have say, less control. it's a great thing that, that Renton County has control. provided a roadmap for us to get that completed. Okay. Anyway, you, you will have I'm less kidding. control, but I'm please, uh, I'm, all, I'm all for, I, I mean, if it, if it would be better for the I whole county, a, a county as a whole, I think it's great. But there is, is a great? reason one county better? in Oregon does it, and the other 35 do not. And mostly it has to do with control. My, I'm just the cooper and I do what I'm yeah, told. I would I have be very super nervous about yeah, getting. Like to read your face when you're listening. Thanks. Less. I, I, know if you're I, I think it would result in less eyes on. Yeah, less eyes. I was much happier. Because just that's year. human nature. Yeah. Out of sight, out of mind, and it would worry. I think it's good to go It's like Sorry. in my world, I well, we'll am looking down bogged it. down on financial statements. So I'm working Oil in the past the first six months of the budget year. Okay, then budget starts in yeah, January. Is, I'm bogged down in the next year. We trim ten percent numbers. numbers. Right. I have two months out of the year to pay attention to the current year we're in. What else we got? <laughs> That's yeah, it. no more pay, huge payouts to deeper debt debts. So, when do we know whether or not this works and it's something that we can pass on? Okay, I'll have all the numbers crunched by tomorrow. I'll just send you guys tomorrow. all the sheep were sent. Okay, so if it's okay with the board. We'll have all of this plugged in. We'll know the exact numbers by email tomorrow. And then through consensus via email, we'll not reply all, but reply directly mm -hmm. to Vicki. And if she gets two thumbs ups, she'll take that to budget committee. If she gets one, then she'll bring it to admin on Tuesday. Okay. Does that work? All right, then that's gonna be our process. Thank you everyone for all of your hard work. Sorry for my soapbox, but it's going to continue. We're going to adjourn at 1140. Do you want me to make the changes? Yeah, a minute. Sure. I got me a brand new knee. I don't watch you stand up. That's how I feel. You'll probably beat me to it since I got to go halfway across Yeah, I will open you up to 4%. It's okay, don't worry about it. More money will come. Oh, am I exactly. dropping the <laughs> I, I actually had that exact thought. I was like, yeah, it's easy coming to go. I want to make sure that I have the same FT because I still think there's an extra position on the jail. In the jail, there is one, and it's been moved from admin because admin only has three or four instead of five. Okay. So that would be something that, that would be a change, though. Right. It would have to be something that, um, which they were planning on taking before it, the budget was over. So you're never going to have two captains again? According to Sheriff, nope.